Hey everyone, welcome. This video we're going to do some review of the loops we've been talking about. So up in my GitHub you can find the source code for this in beginner Python and then loop basics. So what you can do is you can go through and read this or what I would recommend is actually scroll through this and copy it over to your text editor. So we'll copy and then we'll go to Visual Studio Code. Alright, so I'm just clearing out everything we had from the previous videos. And we'll just run this and start from the beginning. So we get a bunch of different outputs and it starts right here at Python. So the very first thing is we make a list of languages, Python, C++, and Java. These are all programming languages. To iterate through these, we create a for loop and we create a variable to store each element and each iteration that variable is going to be assigned a new value. The first iteration it's going to be Python, the next C++, and then the last Java. So we print that, which is why we get the output Python, C++, Java. So that's the first output. Here's some extra information if you want. Next up, you can change the variable. So I was just showing that the variable name is irrelevant. Just make sure you use the right variable name in the loop body if that is what you're trying to do with the loop. So that's why we get the same exact output again. Now what I wanted to show is that you can actually change the ending. So you can say end equals and assign a new value. So one and line show up on the same exact line because we're just printing a space after the first one. Line, however, does not use end. So it goes back to the default of putting a new line, which goes down to here. So next up, we can print all of the elements using just a space and then end with a new line just by printing an empty print statement. So that will go down to the next one right here. And lastly, just showing that there are some variations. You can use a tab or you could use no space at all or whatever you want. Now here's a little bit of an explanation that we haven't talked about and that is why do you have to put end equals and assign it some value? Why don't you just pass it in as another argument like you might do here? Well, if you remember, print can take numerous arguments. So when you pass in a comma and then just an empty string, well, it actually just sees it as another thing to print, which is why it just prints like normal, just with an extra space at the end. So we have to use end equals, which is an example of a keyword argument. Next up, we have the range function, and it's actually a way to create a new object. So it says class range. So when you invoke this, it's going to return a new range object. But we haven't really talked about objects and classes a whole lot, so don't worry about that all right now. Later on in our more advanced Python, we're going to talk about how to create instances of classes, also known as objects. But for now, you can just think of it as a function. It works pretty much the same way. And we say for i in range 10, and then in this situation, we're actually not printing i, we're actually printing loading with a space. So we get loading 10 times. The actual numbers of i are 0 through 9 because the 10 is exclusive. So when we print out like so, 0 through 9. Next up on here, we pass in a starting position. So we start at 1 and go all the way up to 11 exclusive. So we get 1 through 10. So that's how I get this output here. Alternatively, if you're just worried about output, you could take the original situation and you could just print i plus one and that's going to change the output. So it start at one, but the actual index variable, the i is unaffected. So either one works, whatever you prefer. So that's one option. Alternatively, you can change the range such that i is the appropriate value. Here's how to start at any value and end at any value. This one prints five and six because the seven is exclusive. Next up we have the range so you can count negative, you can count downwards. So we go nine all the way to zero and another one is we count down by tens so we go a hundred all the way down to zero. Negative one is the second argument here because I want to go all the way to zero and include zero. Next up we showed how to create a sum so here's actually a shorter version than what we showed. We just say the sum of the range of one to eleven. Next up, how to get a list from a range, which is just to pass it to the list and assign it to a new variable, and that will print the numbers within a list. And then lastly, you can use with indexes, if you say for i in range, and then pass in the length of a list, you can print i, and then languages of i to grab the particular element at that index. 
So that is pretty much all when it comes to for loops. Lots of information. Make sure you understand each and every piece of that before you move on. If there's anything you're a little shaky on, you can rewatch the video and get a little bit more practice. Next up, we're going to talk about some keywords you're probably going to run into fairly soon when you start doing control flow. So stay tuned. I will see you there. And don't you dare forget to subscribe.